Day two of the Phillips 66 National Championship saw the California Golden Bears win three of the four men's events as Andrew Seliscar, Josh Prino, and Ryan Murphy added their names to the Pan Pacific Championships roster. Chase Kalish will look to add his name to that list today in the 400 individual medley. Kelsey Dahlia will lead the field in the women's 100 butterfly. We'll talk about all of that and more next on Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity. Definitely great to be back here at the Woolet Aquatic Center for day three of the Phillips 66 Nationals. Night two was just so electric. I don't know how it's going to be top tonight, but it's going to be so much fun to find out. I'm Jeff Cummings, my co-host here, Amy Van Dyken. Amy, I just, I'm still kind of thinking about last night and all the emotions that I felt yeah. with, you know, people like Allison Schmidt and Micah Sumrall and Andrew Seliscar sneaking in there to win that 200 freestyle. Just so much things happening, but that's mm -hmm. that's why we love this sport. That is why we love this sport. It's, it's such an exciting evening. And, you know, you come and you don't know what to expect. What stars are you going to see? What newcomers are you going to see? And we saw a whole bunch last night. And I think that it is truly uh, a testament as to what is about ready to happen. But you know what? Speaking of stars, we had a huge star in the United States swimming last night do something absolutely amazing, Miss Katie Ledecky. Katie Ledecky just was on fire, wire to wire, winning that 200 freestyle. And, you know, the, we believe that she's not fully rested. And look at that. I mean, she was a full body ahead of Allison Schmidt. That is a testament to how talented this young lady is, that she is not fully rested, that she is winning by such a huge margin. And it's such a risky thing to do coming into a meet like this to not be fully rested. And we do know that some other people um, are not fully rested and not having the same success. So this is one of the talents. This is a young lady we're going to see forever. And I'm so thankful. Yeah. And look at that. Katie has now jumped into the top of the leaderboard with 56 points. And Leah Smith in second with 53. It's going to be a lot of drama coming up from this because now with Leah Smith in the 400 IM tonight, Katie Ledecky has scratched the 1500. That means that Leah Smith essentially has to win the 400 IM tonight if she wants to win the overall Pro Swim Series leaderboard, get that $10,000 and the lease on the BMW. Okay, so question for you, and I don't know if we know the answer to this, but we know Katie Ledecky's not swimming the mile. Do we know anybody else who might be swimming the mile? Miss well, Leah Smith, is she swimming it? If I think if Leah gets second in the mile, I think she'll have to really think about that. All right. All right, so we're going to not talk about the mile anymore because okay. we are we got three sprinters here at the desk, Very including <laughs> three-time Olympian Carolyn Joyce. Kara, so great to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. This is awesome. It's so literally great. Literally sprint group. <laughs> yeah, literally sprint group. We don't like anything over 100. <laughs> so you're back here on deck. Do you, When you walk into a pool, especially like at a Nationals or something now that you're retired, do the memories all start come flooding back? Oh, my gosh, for sure. I'm sure you guys feel the same way, but mm -hmm. I have raced here countless times, many national meets, and um, – those memories are great, but it's all the faces that you see, you know, yeah. running into old friends, old coaches, things like that. So it's it's a walk down memory lane for sure. When you were swimming uh, and you walk onto a deck at Nationals and you see the pool for the first time, or even if it's something like Indy or here at Irvine that you swam in a lot, you know, do you ever get those butterflies in your stomach <laughs> or does it just pump you up even more? Um, I... I definitely get butterflies just like emotional for other people, you know, like watching Missy swim, watching Katie swim, all, all those emotions are for them, but I don't, I don't ever get like the itch to get back in. I don't know how you guys feel, but it's like, no. I oh. see those women in the hundred and I'm like, you guys go for it. You're doing great. Yeah. I'm not coming in there. So talking about watching all of these people swim that you were talking about, Missy and all them, what for the first two nights have you seen that really impressed you or kind of struck a chord? Um, a couple things. Haley Flickener, first of all, in that 200 butterfly. Um, I think we've seen like some moments of brilliance from Haley throughout the season. Um, something in particular that really impressed me was her 406, 400 free about two weeks ago. And I, I was talking to Jack and I was like, Jack, you know, I'm probably not going to make it in the 400 free, but that's going to do, you know, big things for her 200 fly. And Jack has a history of training 200 butterflyers to swim really fast. So um, Haley's 205 was definitely really impressive. And, you know, Missy, a dear friend of mine, somebody that I, I love watching and um, how she handles herself, you know, when success and, and when she's disappointed, she's still the same person and, and her character always shines yeah. through. And um, I loved watching her race and getting seeing her back on the blocks, you know, the last couple of days. So uh, those things in particular, I'm, I'm sure I could talk for an hour about everything. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and obviously you and Missy trained together in the lead up to the 2012 Olympics. And if you guys have not seen the documentary Touch the Wall, you have <laughs> have to see it. 
I got emotional because <laughs> I know you and I know Missy very well and to see how tough it is and everybody really got to understand the highs and lows of the journey to make an Olympic team and it just it's it is just so struggling more times I think probably in a certain <laughs> period of time especially like especially that. as you get older yeah the holiday training season where it's just an endless grind and endless grind and you know just give some advice to the people watching of, of how do you get through stuff like that knowing that you've got this big end goal ahead of you. yeah um, I think with a lot of the kids that I work with a lot of the kids that I coach um, we learn as we mature in this sport as we get older that swimming really is a game of patience right it's a waiting game when you're young you go best times every time you swim you start to get a little bit older and you're like wait a minute I haven't I haven't gone a best time in two or three meets and you realize that okay this taper thing is is real and it, and it is a, a game of patience and it's a waiting game but um, I, I think that would be my, my best advice is like you have to have the patience have faith in what you're doing you know have faith in your program and your coach and good things will happen so the 50 you both were finalists in the 50 freestyle at the Olympics and you know the 50 freestyle has changed so much I mean they're not breathing anymore <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't know how they do that but you know would you do you think that the Carolyn Joyce of the 2008 Olympics or even the the Amy Van Dyke and from the 2000 Olympics would you guys do you guys think you can match up with what they're doing now well, Amy, Time I feel, wise, no. <laughs> yeah. but never one to step down from a challenge. I don't know. We're probably uber competitive. You throw us in there. We'll do something. <laughs> I am not competitive at all. I have never <laughs> done anything to show that I am competitive at all. Uh, not even a little bit. Listen, I don't think I could go the times that they're going no. out. No, but to say, but you know what though? I think we say that and you know, there were like the, the Nancy Hogsheads of the day looking at us going, yeah. there's no way that I could go that time. So, you know, I think Theoretically, if we did what they're doing, perhaps <laughs> that we could. Of course. Although we'll just sit here and talk about it as yeah. opposed to going in and <laughs> Stay swimming. nice and dry. That's right. Yeah, yeah, dry well, unless you're sweating to death, right? <laughs> now, you're living in Colorado. Yes. I'm living there uh, part-time in the summer. Yes. So, uh, you know, training at altitude. A lot of people have talked about this. Back in our day, a lot of people would go um, to, like, Ecuador to do that. How much of an advantage do you think that you really had training at altitude? Okay, I might be on my own island here, but um, when I moved to Denver, I definitely felt the effects of the altitude, mm -hmm. right? Like my very first practice, we were doing sprint 25s mm -hmm. from a dive, no breath, and I fainted after like number three. Oh goodness. Um, and I was like, oh, this altitude thing is real, okay? Right. Um, but coming down from altitude, I never felt the benefit. And I think like it's it's just wow. not for everyone, you know. Um, but if you're born and raised there, like I feel like you know Missy obviously does really well at altitude, and people like Allison Schmidt and Michael Phelps do really well at altitude. But yeah. um, I don't know if it's a sprinter thing or what. But like I, uh, it was not for me. See, I always felt the effects. But again, you were talking about born and raised there, which I was. So perhaps that had a little bit of a difference. I, I don't think know. The but adjustment just takes a long it, time. It takes forever. <laughs> I mean, it is real, people. And when you watch those football games, oh and they're God. like, oh, the team is. <laughs> Sucking wind, you're like, yeah, because they literally <laughs> are, are yeah. sucking wind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, you've been very busy. You stay active with with sports, mm -hmm. specifically with the Lead Sports Summit, and yes. you just founded that like a year ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, thank you. So we we started uh, Lead about a year and a half ago, and um, Lead is uh, a summit for teenage girl swimmers ages 13 to 18. And what we do is we bring in um, amazing women in swimming, like Missy Franklin, Elizabeth Beisel, um, you know, Leah Neal, and, and so on and so forth. And then also specialists in mental health and leadership and confidence. And for four days, we have 100 something girls and a ton of women, and, and we have an awesome time. It's, it's uh, keynotes, panel discussions, um, a lot of fun, breakout groups and a swim clinic and stuff like that. But um, it's, it's awesome just to be able to give back to a sport that I care so much about and, and you know, a, a space that I, that I feel like I know a lot about. Um, so that's that's the lead summit. It's it's over Labor Day weekend in Atlanta, Georgia. How does one get involved in the summit if someone wants to go and be a part of it? Great question. Um, LeadSportsSummit.com, mm -hmm. or you can DM me on social media. We've had a lot of people inquire that way. But um, yeah, go to our website. We we are sold out this year, but you can get more information on our 2019 event, which will be also in Atlanta next year. That's awesome, awesome. that you're sold out. That shows that the word is getting out there after just a very short time. Yeah, it's, really it's, cool. I think it's something that's been needed. So it's it's been really cool to be able to give back in that way. All right, Carolyn cool. Joyce, so great to have you here. Yes. Great to catch Thanks, up with guys. you. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. You guys are doing a great job. You're Thank you. Much. Thanks. Thanks for playing with us. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the prelim races today, including Chase Kalish and his 400 IM prelim swim.
right mind So many things that I want to try Do I really have to decide? With new flexible USA swimming memberships, you can be on America's swim team and still do the other things you love. So many things that I want to try. What a race between these two. Baker with the white cap, and here comes Reagan Smith. She's flailing at the end. This is going right to the touch between Baker and Smith, and it is a tie. They tie for the championship! <laughs> wow! And what a push by Reagan Smith in the last 20 meters to tie Kathleen I still just love that race, a tie for, yeah. for the win. I mean, that's just so great because, you know, you it, when you're watching as a spectator, and yeah. I really love Kathleen, I really love Reagan, I didn't yeah. want either of them to get second. I, I mean, it's just, it's a win-win for everybody. Well, it is, and you're the happy about it because if you watched last night, you understand why I'm going to say is Jeff predicted that as they were coming under the flags, so we're calling him Jeff Dradamus. Jeff Dradamus, I love it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> All right, I don't know who, what I can predict tonight because really, only thing I guess I can predict is that Chase Kalish is going to win the 4 9. We'll talk about that in a minute. But look at these autographs. <gasps> Simone Manuel. Oh my God, woman crush. I can't. I can't. No, I would freak out. But you guys should come. Give yeah. me an autograph, please. Lots of, lot of great people. Blake Peroni is a great guy. Yeah. Clark Smith, Emily Escobedo, Lisa Bratton, Lakey, P Lakey Peterson. These are wow. going to be some really, really nice people. Amazing. It's so much fun. And while you're there, also, we've got Caitlin Sandino and Jason Lezak. They're doing a new show called Taper Time, and they're hanging out with everybody that comes. So make sure that you go and join them and then join us again this evening. There you yep. go. <laughs> and then after you come back from the fan zone, get into the pool here because we got a lot of swims that are going to be electric tonight. Let's talk about some prelims from this morning, starting off with the 400 individual medley and Chase Kalis just looking like he was already thinking about, well, let me slow down here to think about what I'm going to have for lunch. Right. He's like, is it going to be peanut butter and jelly? Maybe I should have a chicken sandwich. I don't know. And you can tell that he really backed off a little bit there. What we were talking about early with Katie Ledecky and how, you know, it, they're so talented that they can do things like yep. that. It really is amazing to see, and it's fun to watch them actually slow down. You can definitely tell. Yeah, and he's going to definitely go faster than 411. I think as fast as of the year's 408, I think he wants to beat that. And, you know, he's always got the fastest time of the year, but, you know, that's not enough for Chase. No, definitely. Not. You know that he wants to go fast, like you said. But here's the thing with Chase, and this is another reason why you look at these people who are on the top, and it's really amazing because, you know, when you're growing up, you always have the swimmers next to you, and you can always look and see where you're at. Look at those races, you guys. Chase doesn't know where he's at. Katie doesn't know where she's at in comparison to the other people because they're so far ahead. So that really goes back to what your coach always has told you is swim within your own yep. lane lines, and that's what they have to do. And he's really going to have to push – himself tonight in order to break that time. And I think he's also going to imagine that his Japanese rivals, Seto and Aguino, are in the lanes next to him. I think that always helps him. Of course it always helps, right? <laughs> you know wouldn't? that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, another great race tonight. It's going to be the men's 100 butterfly, the reigning world champion, Caleb Dressel, trying to still get on that Pan Pack team. He is fourth from the bottom, and we were all looking at him, and then all of a sudden, look at that, second from the bottom. Who is that? That's Jack Saunderson from Towson University, and he's taken it to this field the last heat. Look at that time, 51.48. Wow. 51.48 wow. for the Towson University swimmer, and he is now the top seed. Jack Conger and Michael Andrew all under 52 seconds. I think Caleb Dressel is on. He's really hungry, and I think yeah. he knows what he has to do. So this is going to be a knockdown, drag out race, and I love that in the 100 fly because you know there's going to be like five pianos following there and everybody, and all they got to do is just get, they got to get to the wall. And you know what it's like to have those pianos falling on you, I do. but you know how to get it done. Well, yeah, and these guys know how to get it done as well, and here's the key. You want to drive with your hips. If you can get your hips up and keep seeing that booty come out of the water, that throws your arms forward. That's what these guys do the best, but when we look at that race, you and I were next to each other again this morning, freaking out at what we just saw because we were talking about how people come out of no quote unquote nowhere yeah. to do great things and that's what happened and it is so much fun and that's why the nationals are the best meet ever in the history of the world besides maybe the olympics maybe olympics yeah. maybe maybe, maybe. <laughs> all right so we're going to move on to the women's 400 im and with ella isa scratching it kind of gives a little bit of an open a um, little bit of the easy ground for leah smith here who was last year's champion and you know she's still looking like she's swimming pretty easy and 
you know, she's probably thinking, what am I going to have for lunch? <laughs> I, I, I really think she likes fish tacos. Right, I think she does, but I think they're serving Mediterranean back in the uh, in the room, in the hospitality room, so that's probably what she's going to get. But love her stroke, that traditional straight arm stroke, love it. Yeah, it, uh, and she never looks like, I mean, she's always putting it pretty strong in the, in the heat. So 438, I think she can, she'll definitely go about at least five seconds faster. I think she yeah. can go 433 if she really puts her mind to it. Mm -hmm. But again, it depends on the field. I think sure. if, if after freestyle, after breaststroke, if she's ahead, she knows she doesn't have to put together her fastest freestyle. Save up a little for tomorrow's 400. She's got two 400s tomorrow. So right. I think she's she might be thinking about that and hoping that, you know, the field is not as strong as maybe they can be on the breaststroke and saying, oh, good, now I only have to go 106 on this 100 free. Right. I mean, then that's the thing at this meet. And we have talked to a lot of the swimmers who say it is a qualifying meet. And that's really the, the thing that they want to do is to qualify. So seeing as she does have two 400s tomorrow, she may absolutely back it down. Then again, she may want to go for an awesome time and you may see something amazing tonight. I think you will anyway. Yeah. Leah Smith is just such a pro, but you can definitely tell she's slowed down. I'd like to see her push that last 50 of that yeah. freestyle. I really would just to see what she can do. Yeah. It might warm up her 400 free tomorrow. You never, right? Yeah. You never know. I mean, that's what these middle distance swimmers do. For my Myself, I swam a 50 and I really felt like I mean that was the end of my month because I was so exhausted but these guys you're right Jeff that's kind of how they think and they're warming up so yep. I let's cross our fingers that she she just flies it tonight yeah all right so another of um, one of Amy's top events the women's 100 butterfly and Kelsey Dahlia is the reigning queen of American butterfly and just looking so smooth and effortless here like you said getting the booty up and she is really doing that and she's not letting up here I mean Kelsey knows that she could let hold back a little bit and she put together a great time, 56.8. I think it's fourth in the world this year. Yeah, and her stroke, again, so gorgeous, so effortless. But again, I think tonight she can push it just a little bit more. Yeah, I think she knows where she could do it. But her underwaters look fantastic oh. this morning. I mean, it's just, oh. she just looks like she's just a little dolphin. She looks so effortless in the 100 butterfly. It made me so envious because I <laughs> never, even when I won the Olympic gold medal in 96, never had a 100 butterfly that looked that effortless and looked that easy. And it just looked, every time she swims, she just makes it look like, oh, I'll just go out and swim the 100 butterfly for yeah. two, 3,000 meters. <laughs> no. Uh, so she's she's amazing. What a great talent. I'm so so excited to see her kind of stepping up in that spot because Dana Vollmer is not back at the swim meet yet. So, you know, it's nice to have someone who is, I would say, equally as talented, arguably. Yeah, equally as talented yes. and probably overtake it all. Yeah. All right. So we're going to we're going to close it out here on Deck Pass Live. But you want to be able to come back here tonight. We're going to be here at 8.15 p.m. Pacific. Before that, make sure you watch it all, all the races on the Olympic Channel tonight, 9 to 11 p.m. And then we're going to be back here at Deck Packs Live on USAswimming.org or on USA Swimming's Facebook page. For Amy Van Dyken, thank you guys for joining us. We're going to see you tonight. Talk about it all.